the question is the figure shows the use of the following instrument in anterior teeth appropriate site for electrode placement in first molar for the below picture is okay so i have enlarged the image a little as you can see over here there is some machine and there is some pen like extension of the machine that is probably having some function and if you can see in the second image this extension which is attached to the main machine is uh, placed somewhere on the middle surface or the incisor surface of the tool of the incisor okay so the image that you're seeing over here is basically the electrical pulp tester this pulp tester helps to measure the vitality of the pulp the measure methods to measure the vitality or to assess the vitality of the pulp are you have the heat test then you have the cold test and then you have the EPT, electric pulp tester machine. All three or all, all of these three help to measure the sensitivity of the pulp in the sense they help to measure the nerve conduction potential of the pulp. Okay. But so vitality of the pulp can be broadly classified into sensitivity and sensibility. Okay. So the sensitivity tests are much more easier. The sensitivity tests in actual uh, endodontics are not considered to be vital, are not considered to measure the vitality of the pulp because when you talk about vitality, you're talking about the blood supply of the pulp. So these tests actually are sensitivity tests. They do not measure, measure the actual vitality of the pulp. What helps to measure the actual vitality of the pulp is laser Doppler flowmetry. And these are the sensibility tests laser Doppler flowmetry and the second one is pulse oximetry. These are two tests which help to assess the blood flow on the pulpal organ and that is why they help to measure the vit actual vitality of the pulp. Okay, now coming to the machine over here. If you can see in this image, the pulp tester, you have uh, this entire thing will actually, what you're seeing is one type of pulp tester. This pulp tester that you see over here is basically battery operated. What will happen is you place a battery within this main machine. It has readings on it. These readings are going to help you assess what, tell you what is the, uh, it's going to basically tell you that, okay, so much wattage or so much uh, current is being passed through the tooth and uh, at a particular point, the patient is going to give some type of response. In order to ensure, see, basically this is a circuit. This entire pulp tester machine works on the principle of a circuit. So what happens is, you have the tooth which is one type, which is one electrode. And you have the pulp tester machine which is, an, which is the other electrode. You have to place something like a uh, toothpaste which is going to act as a medium for uh, as in, in order to complete the circuit, that is going to act as your electrolyte. So, this is basically your toothpaste. In order to complete the circuit, this entire hook will be placed in the patient's buccal mucosa or the cheek so that a circuit can be completed. Once this entire circuit is completed, what is going to happen is your electrode is going to pass current through the tooth. Once it passes current through the tooth, how do you use this machine is, you take Suppose I am measuring the maxillary right central incisor. So what will I do is, I will take the readings of the maxillary left central incisor, the maxillary right lateral incisor, the mandibular central incisors, both the right as well as the left. So what I will first do is, I will first measure the lateral incisor, the left central incisor and the mandibular central incisors, both the right and the left. I will note what are the readings that I get from those. After that, I will place the electric pulp tester machine on the maxillary right central incisor which is my uh, incisor of question so i will place it on that and i will measure the uh, i will measure the readings that i get from that now based on the readings that i get from that i will be able to understand and comparing it to the previous readings that is all the other teeth that i had taken into consideration i will be able to understand whether the what is the exact uh, sta status or condition of the pulp if I do not get any response from the lateral, from the central incisor as compared to the other teeth that were in question or my control teeth, 
That means the pulp in that tooth is necrotic because the nerve supply has been completely cut off. However, if I get an early response, let's say that the reading over here for my maxillary left central incisor was 12. If I place it on the right incisor and I say that I get it at 8, the patient complains of pain at 8. That means the pulp in that area is in a state of inflammation. And because it is inflamed, you are getting an early response. If there is no response, it is uh, necrotic. However, if it is the same response as your control tea, that means it is normal. However, there are conditions in which you do not use these pulp testers. Number one, the most important is if that tooth which is non-vital has a prosthesis on top of it or an orthodontic wire. Why? Because it is going to act as an electrical conductor in its, on its own and it is going to give false readings. Second is if you have three roots, like for example the first molar, you have three roots. Two roots are nec uh, necrotic, however one root, one, two canals are necrotic and one canal is vital. So that vital canal you will have to ensure that over there, the, because that vital canal what you will do is, uh, the canal is vital over there, you may get false readings. Teeth which are immature and do not have complete apical formation in the, those conditions also you will get false results. So these are situations when you will get false results and that is the reason why it is advisable to not use the pulp tester in these situations. Now coming to the question over here, now for the maxillary teeth you will place it on the in, uh, middle third of the tooth. For the, for the posterior teeth what you will do is the mesial surface is more accessible as compared to the distal surface. So that is the reason why you will place it on the mesial surface. Compa now uh, comparing to the teeth over here, the options over here, you know that I've, since I have told the mesial surface is more accessible, both option 3 and option 4 are out. When it comes to the first two, the mesial cusp surface is basically they are talking about if this is your cusp, you place it somewhere over here. However, when you know the anatomy, you know for a fact that the cusp tip has the thickest enamel as compared to all the other portions. And that is the reason why you should always place it at the cusp tip because the cusp tip is a very reliable indicator and it will always give you an indication as to where it is going to be uh, vital and where it is not going to be uh, non-vital. So the cusp tip since it has that thick and enamel it helps to give a very good response from that region and that is why you place it there. 